bar. Same thing as using the double leg version or using a dumbbell version. We're simply using a bar for your resistance. So the way I encourage you to get into it is hinge up with both, then shift onto one foot, find that balance position before you start going through your movement. A couple things to keep in mind. You don't want to go into rounding or flexing your lower back. You're going to be nice and neutral from ribs down to hips. Second thing is, initiate your movement by getting your hip behind your ankle. You lift your toes, that's going to encourage that so you can get your glute involved and not get the weight out in front of you. The weight's going to travel straight down and straight up. We shouldn't have it moving forward and then being pulled back. When you come up to the top, make sure you get a good glute squeeze. If we're not really incorporating that glute into the movement, then we're probably just feeding into some bad patterns. So, range of motion, knee height. I use a catch, in my case I have to use a little bit of a riser. The bottom catch is a little too high for me. When I get down, I want to be at about knee height, so I'm going to use whatever I need to to stack up height-wise so that I can achieve that range of motion. Going further than that, getting parallel, it doesn't become a right wrong issue. In my opinion, there's a little more risk going for those last few inches of range of motion. So things like hamstring strains, uh, lumbar flexion, lumbar shearing. So in my opinion, I just don't think the risk is worth what you might get as far as value out of that. Once you cross knee height, come back up, that's gonna be enough for you. So start and double leg. Come up, position your foot, find your balance, hip hinge back. Weight travels down your leg, unload the weight at the bottom, and then drive that hip forward, squeeze your glute at the top. When you finish, go back to double leg, 